So, the auto snipers. Out of all the weapons in CSGO, none have seen more consistent hate than the auto snipers. Sure, a few other weapons have also received hate from time to time, but the negative attitudes towards those weapons usually subside after balancing changes are set in place. The auto snipers, on the other hand, have not seen a statistical change in, well, maybe ever. Yet they still manage to receive a huge amount of hate, whether it be in deathmatch or competitive matchmaking. Get rid of the auto, man. But why are the auto snipers so disliked among the CSGO community? Are they really so overpowered? Or are they simply low-skilled weapons for noobs such as myself? And why are they the most hated guns in CSGO? Of course, before we discuss anything, we first need to take a quick look at both of the auto snipers' weapon statistics. As always, I won't be discussing all of their weapon statistics, but just the ones I find to be important and or interesting. If you'd like to do some research of your own, all of the statistics I will be using today can be found via Sloth Squadron spreadsheet, which will be linked in the description box below. So, to start things off, at $5,000, the auto snipers in CSGO are unsurprisingly some of the most expensive weapons in the game. While technically not the most expensive weapon, they're definitely not cheap, as they do manage to top the price list for sniper rifles on both T and CT sides. For this ridiculous amount, the auto snipers contain some of the strongest raw bullet damages, highest armor penetration values, and the best material penetration powers in all of CSGO. Yet, even at 80 raw damage per bullet and 82.5% armor pen, the auto snipers are still second to that of the AWP, and surprisingly, even the scout. But they are called auto snipers for a reason. And unlike most traditional snipers, the autos contain a boosted fire rate of about 240 rounds per minute. As such, both auto snipers maintain a DPS rating that far surpasses their sniper rifle counterparts, scoring 316 damage per second against unarmored opponents and 261 damage per second against armor. The reload times, on the other hand, are more in line with what you'd expect from snipers in CSGO. Unfortunately, the G3 SG-1, or T-Auto, is actually the slowest out of all the sniper rifles, with a 2.61 clip ready and 4.67 fire ready time after reload. However, to the contrary, the SCAR-20, or CT-Auto, is the fastest reloading sniper, with a 1.4 second clip ready and 3.08 second fire ready time after reloading. But besides the reload difference, both auto snipers seem nearly identical, both containing almost no damage drop off and the second highest tagging power at 61%. In addition, they also include a deceptively good mobility at 215, which is about the same speed as an AK 47. Although, unlike the AK, the auto snipers are much more accurate. So, as sniper rifles, the auto snipers obviously have some of the best standing and crouching inaccuracies while scoped. In fact, the statistical values between the ops scoped standing and crouching inaccuracies versus the auto snipers are so minor that they hardly differ in first shot inaccuracy. That being said, there is a huge difference when discussing unscoped inaccuracies. As we can see, the auto snipers beat both the op and scout's unscoped inaccuracy statistics by a fair margin. Combined with the lowest sniper rifle recoil and inaccuracy from firing, both auto snipers remain fairly accurate even while shooting at full speed. However, while both auto sniper groupings may seem very precise and accurate, remember that even the slightest deviation can be magnified into a miss when firing from longer ranges. Which leads us into our next topic. So, how should you use the auto snipers in CSGO? Can you guess? Just hold mouse one. You dingus, your best friends are animal. But truthfully, they're a bit harder to use than just that. Of course, I know most people refer to the auto snipers as noob weapons, which does bear some credibility as they are the easiest sniper rifles to pick up and use. 
but don't mistake that saying to mean that the auto snipers are anywhere near overpowered. Believe it or not, they might actually require more game sense to use than the AWP. That's the dumbest thing I've ever heard in my life! Okay, okay, let me explain. Now, while having an auto sniper may be great for deathmatch or maybe even lower ranks in MM, they exponentially lose effectiveness the higher you climb in mechanical skill. That is to say, that the higher you rise in skill level, the better people tend to aim. This is where precision and lethality begin to trump luck and tenacity, at least for snipers. Of course, as the auto snipers cannot one shot to the body, they definitively lose in terms of flat lethality to the AWP. Having to hit one shot is always easier than having to hit two. As such, I consider the auto snipers to be very poor in terms of the traditional dueling aspect. At least against other snipers. So, because the autos have little to no advantage over the AWP when engaging in the standard peek and shoot fashion, they rely heavily on superior positioning, player awareness, and concentrated fire to make up the lethality deficit. That's part of the reason why I don't suggest using either auto sniper in an aggressive fashion. Even with a 215 move speed, you generally have to stay still in order to land a shot, which more than likely causes you to overcommit in order to secure the kill. That's not to say that you can't make it work through teamwork and game sense, but honestly, the auto snipers are much better suited as passive, stationary rifles to hold positions and punish rushes. It is here where the auto snipers start to see a bit more success than the AWP, as of course its semi-auto capabilities allow for an easier engagement of multiple targets. But more importantly, it also allows for the production of suppressing fire, which can also be used to effectively spam through objects, as the auto snipers do contain the best penetration powers in the game. However, keep in mind that it's especially important for auto users to rotate positions, as again, it's better suited for ambushes rather than 1v1 sniper duels. Plus, you also gain a bit more flexibility in finding stationary positions, as you also have the added option of panic firing from the hip. Obviously, while I don't recommend hip firing, it's better than nothing, and far more consistent than if you were to try no-scoping with an AWP. Having said that, while no-scoping an auto does give it a slight advantage over the AWP and CQC, playing close is not something you should be trying to do. Unless, of course, you're prepared to mortgage your house and sell your car. Speaking of which, when should you buy an auto sniper? Now, this is a bit of a tricky question. As I've said before, the auto snipers really only excel in very specific situations, and even then, they can just as easily be countered by ops or even scouts if used correctly. Again, the auto sniper's lack of instant lethality severely limits its effective utility, giving it even less reason to buy over the AWP. Heck, even the scouts are able to body shot unarmored individuals, while the autos cannot. You ain't never seen no one at nobody as skilled as me. What? Factoring in the various other repercussions of losing a $5,000 sniper, and I would severely restrict the instances of purchasing said auto to either just before the half or rounds nearing the end of the game. Honestly, unless you're absolutely being steamrolled by enemies who repeatedly push and are terrible with the op like me, there aren't too many rounds where buying an auto is tactically feasible. In fact, I wouldn't even recommend buying the T-Auto Sniper at all. Unless you somehow find yourself playing a hostage rescue map, or are just steamrolling so hard that money doesn't even matter. Seriously. Not only are the autos terrible for pushing and peeking, but the T-Auto specifically has one of the slowest reload times in the game. Based on the G3's stupidly long reload time, it really seems like the devs wanted to push the auto snipers as mainly defensive weapons. Since one of, if not the only difference between the two autos, is that the SCAR-20 contains a much faster reload time. 
yet even with the faster reload speed. For $5,000, the autos are still some of the most cost ineffective weapons in CSGO. As such, it's kinda hard to even justify buying the CT auto, as money management is much more important for the CT side in general. There is a reason why you rarely see the auto snipers used in professional play, and it has nothing to do with civilities. But if the auto snipers are really as bad as I make them seem, why do people constantly hate them for being overpowered? Well, that's a rather loaded question. But I do have some theories on why. Of course, one of the obvious reasons is that the auto snipers are very easy to pick up and use, and like the P90, they receive an unnecessary amount of hate. While I can understand the hate for auto snipers in deathmatch, because let's face it, nobody really needs to practice aiming the thing, Tenna is hacking. there really shouldn't be the same level of hate when it's used in competitive play. As we've seen, it's far from overpowered, and just too expensive, especially with better and cheaper alternatives like the AWP. So what's with all the hate? Well, I think one of the biggest reasons why the auto snipers maintain such a bad reputation is that they are consistently used by hackers. The only times I can vividly remember seeing an auto sniper in competitive play is when some asshole decides to blatantly spin bot, wall hack, or aim bot with it. Because of the auto sniper's range, firepower, and penetration, it's basically the perfect weapon for cheaters. It's kind of sad that these cheaters have to not only ruin the game, but also ruin the reputation of particular weapons in the process. Kinda like some other things in life. In conclusion, while both auto snipers are definitely statistically strong, the absorbent price and lack of lethality leave much to be desired. To clarify, I'm in no way saying that they're terrible weapons, as they can obviously be used rather decently. But when factoring in its price for cost effectiveness, like the heavy machine guns, there are definitely better alternatives, for all but a handful of situations. Yet, as inefficient as they may be, they still receive an unnecessary amount of hate, through no fault of their own. Look, as much as I love to use both auto snipers, and believe me I do, their advantages are just too niche and their weapon cost is way too expensive to risk using consistently in competitive play. They may not need a buff per se, but I do think they need some sort of statistical shuffling, at least something positive to bring them back into the competitive meta. Honestly, for $5,000, you could buy a decent car. I dream about Lamborghini. <laughs> <laughs> but seriously, maybe lowering the price by a couple hundred dollars along with decreasing its damage, AP, and penetration would do much to bring the weapon back into competitive relevance. At least give the T-Auto the same reload speed as its CT counterpart. But that's just my opinion. Like always, I wasn't even close to covering everything, but hopefully I shed some light on a few things you may not have known. So what do you guys think about the auto snipers? Are they only for noobs, and do they deserve the hate? Are they overpowered weapons, or do they actually need a buff? Either way, they're still the most hated guns in CSGO. He's hacking. He's not gonna get rid of that. Freak engine. Tenna. Tenna is hacking. Tenna? Tenacious? Yeah. He needs freaking spin botting and everything. Oh, and he's in the armor. He's even spin botting? Yes, dude, I freaking hate this guy. Okay, you guys, I can't get my hand in the car to go for him.
Yes, please. You guys will all stay. So I know I You're welcome, guys. Oh, I think she's sweet here.